Amen. Wow. Um, firstly, let me just um, say that I am incredibly nervous <laughs> because this is actually the first time I, I guess, share a word in public, funny enough. Um, I'm used to, you know, sitting in the comfort of my own home, being in front of a camera, you know, so there I can be myself, I can say whatever I want to say, do whatever I want to do. Um, but for the first time, I am whew, in front of people, you know, so now I have to look at faces and wonder, can they hear me? Do they understand me? But yeah, let's, let's get right into it. Firstly, I want to greet you all in the wonderful name of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Yeah. As you heard, my name is Ubi Tepotladi. Um, I promise you, I am not speaking because, you know, my, my father is the pastor. <laughs> um, I, I do believe that the Lord has something very special for us today. Um, so yeah, before we get in, I just want to pray, or rather I want to just invite the Holy Spirit into this room. Um, what I was so encouraged by was the testimony by Aus Zoleka. Um, and just what happened after that was such a testament mm. of the presence of God yeah. in this room. Yeah. So what I want to do is actually invite each and every one of us to not um, pass this opportunity yeah. by, yeah. right? I know that we all look so beautiful and I know that, you know, we have makeup on. I'm the type of person when I look good, like the skin, you know, don't bother me. <laughs> um, but yeah, I know we all look super good and we are all um, dressed well. But may we take this time to just humble ourselves in the presence of the king, as mom said, you know. Um, so if you need to cry, cry. No one is going to judge you because your makeup is looking funny, you know. In fact, I'm a crier, so I brought tissues in front, you know. Um, so yeah, I just allow you, I, I, I encourage you and I invite you to be okay, to chill, to open up your heart, allow the energy, allow, ooh, allow the Lord, <laughs> allow the Lord to do his work in your heart. Um, and I pray that you hear the Lord's heart, not my heart. Yeah? My heart has a lot of stuff. Don't hear my heart. Hear the Lord's heart. Amen. So in the mighty name of Jesus, yes, Lord. Lord, we just want to thank you for this time. Oh, Holy Spirit, we invite you into this place. We ask you to have your way. Have your way in every heart. Have your way in my heart. Lord, we ask that you make each heart fertile ground for this word. In the name of Jesus, may the issues of our heart May any offense in the mighty name of Jesus not hinder the word. Hallelujah. May any unforgiveness not hinder this word. We thank you, Holy Spirit. We know you are here. And we acknowledge your presence. And what we ask, Lord, is that you help not only me, but each and every one of us to minister to one another. But most of all, Holy Spirit, minister to us because we are in need. We are in need of you. Yes. Yes. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So, um, for those of us who have Bibles or those of us who have Bible apps, can we please um, open First Corinthians 14, verse 1 to 5. So that is 1 Corinthians 14, verse 1 to 5. And the title of this word that I have for us today is Godly Femininity. Amen. Godly Femininity. Not any type of femininity, but specifically Godly Femininity. So that is 1 Corinthians 14, verse 1 to 5. And I'll read it for us. This is in the Amplified Version. This is my favorite version. Right, so it reads, pursue love with eagerness, make it your goal, yet earnestly desire and cultivate the spiritual gifts, but especially that you may prophesy. For one who speaks in an unknown tongue does not speak to people, but to God, for no one understands him or catches his meaning. 
but by the Spirit he speaks mysteries. Yeah. But on the other hand, the one who prophesies speaks to people for edification. What is edification? To promote their spiritual growth. And speaks words of encouragement to uphold and advise concerning the matters of God. And speaks words of consolation, which is to compassionately comfort the people of God. It is one who, so sorry, one who speaks in a tongue edifies himself. But one who prophesies edifies the church. In other words, one who prophesies promotes growth in spiritual wisdom, devotion, holiness, and joy. Now, I wish that all of you spoke in unknown tongues. But even more, I wish that you would prophesy. Because the one who prophesies is greater and more useful than the one who speaks in tongues, unless he translates or explains what he says so that the church may be edified. Amen. We bless the reading of the Lord's word. So what we are seeing here, guys, in 1 Corinthians 14 is basically Paul unpacking not only the significance of prophecy, but what it actually is to prophesy, right? And he makes it very simple to us. He says, number one, Prophecy is the ability to speak and promote spiritual growth. Prophecy is the ability to speak words of encouragement that uphold and advise people on the matters of God. He says prophecy is the ability to speak words that compassionately comfort. He says prophecy is the ability to promote growth in spiritual wisdom, devotion, holiness, and joy. So in verse 5 when Paul says, I wish that you would prophesy. In fact, he is saying to us, I wish that you would speak speak to promote spiritual growth. I wish that you would speak words of encouragement that uphold and advise people on the matters of God. I wish that you would speak words that compassionately comfort each other. I wish that you would promote growth in spiritual wisdom, devotion, holiness, and joy. Amen. Right? This is what he is urging us. In fact, this is, it's almost like a dare. I wish you would do this. So I want to propose something, an idea to us today as women. I want to propose that if we are to walk in the true significance of our identities as females, right? There's a standard of femininity that we are to strive for. Amen. 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 If we are to walk and fully embody our femininity, this this title that we are, you know, carrying the daughters of God, there's actually an element of the supernatural that you should be walking in. Right? If you are to walk completely and fully in this, title of I'm a daughter of God, the supernatural can simply not be ignored. And unfortunately, we ignore it. I want to propose, ladies, that the standard of femininity that I'm referring to is so rare, even between us as women of God. Right? This is a type of femininity that is not defined by the way you dress. Mm-hmm. It is not defined by the way you carry yourself. Yeah. It's not defined by how you know good you walk in heels or how well you put on your makeup. Yeah. Instead, this type of femininity actually uncover- uncovers what you are truly made out of. Yeah. Yeah. When we strip everything, yeah. when we strip the makeup and the heels and the good looks, It's actually what you are truly made out of. It's your substance. Right? So today what I came here to do is to actually dismantle and break down all these false ideas we have of what it actually means to be a woman. Right? I know I am young, but allow me to do that. (laughs) I really want to dismantle this idea that we have been fed Sometimes yeah. by the world, but even yeah. by our churches, yeah. right? Yeah. This idea that us as women, we are feeble, mm. we are weak, yeah. 
the only thing we are good for is sitting in the kitchen and making babies Aye. right some churches even encourage us not to stand at the pulpit yeah. but you see when you understand the true significance of your godly femininity you realize that number one you are a direct portal of the natural and the supernatural yeah. you as a female yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. and i want to repeat that because i feel like we didn't catch that i was not walking yeah. when you understand the significance of your role as a female yeah. you are a direct portal yeah. from the natural rather from the supernatural into yeah. the natural yes yeah. you have the gift of pulling things out of the unseen yeah. and into the scene. Yeah. 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 Amen. Yeah. Now I actually want to just, you know, dive a little into this term that we love throwing around. And I don't mean that disrespectfully because it's a good term. This term of helper and why it is so important also for us to understand why we are helpers what it means for us to be helpers right yeah. so when we look at the synonyms of the word helper this is what google says guys and i get it we trust google google says <laughs> a helper is a co-worker is a teammate wow. is second in command okay. yeah. is the right hand man mm. is an associate wow. an aide a partner or a deputy yeah. Amen. so when we consider these synonyms there are a few people in the word right that come to mind and i'm not going to mention women because yeah? it's obvious when you say oh a woman is a helper yeah? there are a few prominent people and beings in the word that actually fit this role of being a helper yeah. A deputy, a second in command. The first one that I have that I want to bring to us today is Joseph. Wow. Joseph was second in command yes. to Pharaoh. Mm. And it was his wisdom that helped save the land of Egypt. Yeah. In Genesis 41, verse 43 to 44, it reads, Pharaoh had him ride in a chariot as his second in command. And people shouted before him, make way. Thus he put him in charge of the whole land of Egypt. Then Pharaoh said to Joseph, I am Pharaoh. Listen to that. I am Pharaoh, but without your word, no one will lift a hand in Egypt. I am Pharaoh. I am king. You are second in command. You are my helper. Ooh. But without your word, nothing will happen in Egypt. No one will lift a hand or a foot in all of Egypt. The second person that I want to bring to our attention is actually John the Baptist. John the Baptist was a forerunner for Christ. His assignment was to, in fact, help Christ by preparing the way for the Lord. And I hope that as I am mentioning these people, you're understanding more in depth, yes, the weight of what it means to be a helper. Now, the third person, right, who's the greatest helper of all time is the Holy Spirit. Yes. Wow. He is known as our helper and is also an equal part mm. of the Trinity. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Right? Yes. In fact, John 16 verse 7 says, But I tell you the truth, and this is Jesus speaking. He says, It is to your advantage that I go away. For I do not go away. For if I do not go away, the helper, the comforter, the advocate, the intercessor, the counselor, the strengthener, the standby will not come to you. Ladies, if you are to walk in your godly femininity, you need to be an intercessor. I don't actually think that we have a choice as women. 
there's absolutely no choice that you have yeah. but to be an intercessor. Yeah. If you are to walk in the true significance and the true weight of your femininity, the true weight of your, your identity as a daughter of mm. God. Amen. 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 Mm. In fact, guys, when we consider the people or yeah, the people that I've just mentioned, we see a few things. We see that this role of being a helper requires one to be discerning. Yeah. It requires one to be incredibly wise. Yeah. It requires you to be resourceful, to be quick on your feet, Amen. to be resilient. Yeah. In fact, to be a warrior. Yes. And that is not a word that we use when we speak speaking to women in the church. Yeah. You are actually a soldier. Yes. Amen. Yeah. And some of us need to be reminded of that today. Mm -hmm. You are a soldier. Yes. Amen. You are a leader. Yeah. Yeah. You are a thinker. Yes. <laughs> you are logical. Yes. Wow. Amen. Amen. But the only way we can truly unlock this power is if we understand the Holy Spirit. Yes. And that is why I, I read 1 Corinthians 14. Mm. That is the only way we can unlock the significance. Yeah. If we understand the Holy Spirit, if we hear the Holy Spirit, yeah. and if we have deep intimacy yeah. with the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. 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 You know, before I... Come in, Aus Natasha. You are welcome, my sister. <laughs> um, one thing that I... I failed to understand before taking my walk with the Lord seriously is how deeply rooted my womanhood or my femininity was in the supernatural. Mm. Mm. Right? Mm. It is the moment I unlocked the supernatural that I understood my significance. Yeah. Yeah. And something that I believe is that the Lord wants to awaken some of us today yeah, yeah, yeah. to that very significance yeah. Yeah. of your femininity, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah. He wants to show so many of us today how the divine and the supernatural is closely associated to what you are carrying yeah. as a woman. Yeah. Simply because you have the ability to give birth. Yeah, That's yeah. enough. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Mm. He wants to tap into this today. Amen. Mm. But in order for us to do this, we need to understand that our role can only be um, executed well in the place of the supernatural. Yeah. And I'm speaking specifically to young people. Yes. I'm speaking specifically to young women. Yes. I believe that there's a deep call for the discernment of young women yeah. in this generation to yeah. be awakened yeah. Yeah. and increased. Yes, thank you, Jesus. I think there's, in fact, a desperate need mm. that a lot of us carry in our hearts, yeah. right? It's a cry to hear the Lord better, yeah. to hear Him more accurately, yeah. to be more discerning. Yeah. Amen. There's a deep need for us to understand the things of the Spirit. Yeah. Amen. Right? Mm. Sure. Amen. 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 So yeah, I really love what um, has been happening throughout this day. We have been quoting Proverbs 31, and I thought, you know, Lord, that is such a confirmation. So I just want to, um, I firstly want to say to the young women in this room, including the, you know, the mature women, <laughs> if you are a woman and you do not hear from God, you are in trouble. Yeah. Yeah. It's honestly yeah. as simple yeah. as that, yeah. unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. If you are a woman and you do not hear from God, you are in so much trouble. Yeah. Yeah. I And I'm speaking about this trouble from experience. Yeah. I'm not saying that from a place of strength, yeah. right? You are in trouble. Yeah. You fail to hear his no. Yeah. And you also fail to hear his yes. You know, quick commercial break, I'm acting like my dad, but um, <laughs> I remember about five years ago, maybe four or five years ago, being in such a toxic 
relationship. And this relationship was eating at me. And you know when something is so terrible, but you don't even have evidence of like, I can't even point to something. I just know that it's not right. This thing is not right, you know. But what was happening was that the Lord had been showing me dreams of exactly what this young man was doing. But you understand that at that time when you're not in the Lord, how could God possibly be yeah. speaking to me? Sure. But I didn't understand the significance of my role as a woman. That there is such a grace for me to enter the supernatural and hear. Yeah. Right? We are so intuitive. In fact, the, that's what the world tells us. Yeah. Women just have a knowing. Yeah. A woman can tell when something is on or off. Yeah. She doesn't even need to be in, in, in the kingdom of God. She yeah. just knows that I'm more Konale something. Yeah. That is just the grace that we have. Yeah. And I remember sitting on my bed one day and just hearing the small voice said to me, saying to me, I dare you to believe me. I dare you to believe that what I'm showing you in your dreams is the truth. At this time, I don't even have the language to say, this is God. You think that because I come from a pastoral family, that I would have that language. No, I didn't. I didn't have that language. What, what, why would God be talking to me? For what? You know? <laughs> so this is, I'm sharing the story just to um, emphasize that if you are a woman who cannot identify when the Holy Spirit is speaking to yeah. you, you are in trouble. Yes. Yes. And I wanna, I wanna make this note that the Lord speaks to us differently, yeah. right? Yeah. So I don't want anyone to feel like I'm ah, nah, I don't get dreams, nah, I don't get visions. The Lord speaks to us differently. Yeah. Some of us get dreams, some of us get visions, some of us get a knowing. Yeah. You know, I'm the type of person the Lord can speak to me on Instagram mm. as I'm, you know, scrolling and I see something, I'm like, that is God. Mm. Sometimes I, I get into an Uber and the radio is playing, mm. right? Mm. And a random song will start playing, but something in my spirit says, that's God. Yeah. Mm. If you are a woman who cannot identify when the Lord is speaking to you, unfortunately you are in trouble. But the Lord wants to end that today. Amen. Amen. So I want to read Proverbs 31, verse 25 to 26. And it reads as follows. This is the scripture that um, Zimbini read. It says, she is clothed with strength and dignity. Hallelujah. She can laugh at the days to come. She speaks with wisdom and faithful instruction is on her tongue. Wow. So basically this scripture, ladies, is painting an image of this relationship between our femininity and the ability to hear God, yeah. right? Wow. The scripture tells us how the ideal woman has the ability to see beyond the present. Yeah. She laughs at the days to come. Mm. It tells us that the ideal woman is able to see beyond the present, yeah. to console, encourage, and guide. Wow. Mm. As well as offer words that uphold and advise others in wisdom. It says she speaks mm. with wisdom and faithful instruction is on mm. her Tongue. So what does this sound like to me? Mm. It sounds like the word is saying that the ideal woman is prophetic. Yeah. Amen. Right? Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. It says that the ideal woman has the ability to hear from God. Yeah. She has the ability to discern when the Lord is speaking. Because wow. it's only with the Holy Spirit that we are able to speak with wisdom yeah. and offer faithful instruction. Yeah. Amen. 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 Sure. Hallelujah. Another proposal that I have for you guys today. I'm sure you guys can see I'm an academic now. <laughs> yeah. Um, another proposal that I have for you guys today to consider um, is that every woman needs to strive for this gift yeah. and this grace. Yeah. Of Amen. discerning the Lord so accurately. Yeah. Yeah. Hearing his voice so accurately. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. Right? We do not need to strive to be prophets. Mm. But we do need to strive to walk in the prophetic. Yes. Yes. Right? There's this um, amazing woman that I love so much. Her name is Dr. Alexis. She always says that you are the prophet of your own life. Yes. Yes. You don't need to find a prophet to speak over your life. Yes. You are the prophet over your own yes. life. Yes. And that is what I want to encourage us today. Amen. You have the grace to wholeheartedly yeah. release a word over your life. Yeah. You have the grace to receive a word over your life. Yeah. And when I mean receive, I mean you read the word and you say, this one is mine. Yeah. Yeah. This promise, Lord, yeah. it belongs to me. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Something that the Lord actually spoke to me as I was making this, these notes. He said, as a woman, your spiritual womb needs to be fertile. Yes. It needs to be fertile. And unfortunately, a lot of us are or, or godly women but we are infertile in the spirit yeah. it's impossible for the lord to plant a seed and yeah. for it to actually be birthed full term yeah. Yeah. so many things catch our seed even before we give birth to it we have a natural gift of multiplying yeah. and giving birth in the flesh. Yeah. So it should be so in the spirit. Yes. Yes. It should be so in the spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. In fact, I want to I want to go further and say that if you have found yourself right now and you're thinking I don't actually think that there's ever been a promise in my life that has been fulfilled. Right? Mm. There's never been a promise that I've received or a prayer I have made and it's actually manifested in the flesh where I can <laughs> touch it. The possibility is that we're struggling with infertility. Mm. It's not the Lord's issue. Yeah. It's your issue. Yo. Right? Yeah. So yeah, the word I actually have for us today, ladies, is that there's a deep, deep prophetic anointing that follows you as a woman. Yes. And that is why the world says, as I said before, that women have intuition. It's just that grace that we are existing in, the, the grace of knowing, right? But I also believe that the Lord wants to awaken so many of us yeah. to this natural gift that we are already operating in. Mm. Hey, Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 In fact, I believe that there is a desperate cry in the hearts of women. Yeah. And the women in this room, right? Yeah. A need and a desire to hear God more clearly, yeah. to discern yeah. Him. And discern him with accuracy, yeah. with confidence, yeah. right? Yeah. A lot of us have found ourselves in very compromising situations. Yeah. A lot of us have wasted our time yeah. Yeah. with the wrong people, yeah. friendships, relationships, yeah. places. Yeah. We have bled. Yeah. Some of us have bled spiritually and physically. Yeah. I'm one of those people who have bled both ways. Yeah. We have gone to war. Mm. All because we failed to hear God. Yeah. Yeah. There are some things that are inflicted over us and we can't necessarily um, control them. Yeah. But there are some things that have been self-inflicted. Yeah. 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 Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And those self-inflicted wounds yeah. are because we have failed to hear yeah. God. Yeah. It's our infertility in the spirit mm. to receive something from the Lord and actually birth it yeah. in your womb. Mm. <clears throat> nah? It's when the Lord comes to you and says, I dare you to believe that that voice you heard is actually me. Mm. And then you say, okay. Yeah. So many of us are struggling with that. So as I close today, I want to just pray for women. Yeah. Um, 
that was a strong um, urge that I had in my spirit that we actually need to lay hands mm. on each other. Mm. We need to hug each other. Yeah. Mm. We need to, and that's why I loved what happened. We need to hold each other today and cry in each other's arms. But there also needs to be an impartation, yeah. Yeah. right? There needs to be an impartation. You cannot leave here the same. Yeah. You can also not leave here hearing God the way you heard him before. Yeah. I don't want to hear God the way I heard him yeah. before. Yeah. So if you're one of those women who are sitting and you feel like, but I hear God well, I'll tell you why that's a problem. <laughs> no. So I want to address a certain type of woman that the Lord is actually also calling in this time. Not only the women who are struggling to hear, but there's also a, a certain type of woman that the Lord is calling. Who? Amen. So you find this woman in 2 Kings chapter 4. We do not need to go there, but I would, I would encourage you to go and read it in your own time. Eh? So 2 Kings chapter 4. We find two very different women, but they are in very similar predicaments. And when I share why these predicaments are so similar, I hope it blows your mind because it really blew my mind. You know, there's some revelations you receive and you're like, no, that was God because I'm not this smart. Like, this one, it, I, it really blessed me rather. Let me say it like that. So we have the first woman and we find her story in verses one to seven, right? And we know her, her issue, sorry, we know her issue very well. She has recently lost her husband. She is in need of money. She goes to the man of God and she says, listen, you need to help because this man has left me and my kids with absolutely nothing. And the man of God instructs her to go around her village and collect as many empty jars as she can find. This is labor. It's labor. And he says to her, after you've collected those empty jars, you then take the little oil that you do have left and you, you know, you do the things. Mm. And she says, shut, I'll do that. So she does this and to her surprise, she manages to fill up every empty jar mm. from the very little oil that she actually had. Mm. Now, this is a story, guys, of provision, right? Mm. It's a story of the Lord doing something supernatural something so miraculous i had this much oil i've collected these many jars and i've managed to fill them all with the very little oil that i had but now listen to what verse 6 says and this is what took me back verse 6 says when the containers were all full she said to her son bring me another container and he said to her there is not one left. Then the oil stopped multiplying. Mm. Okay, okay, okay. Are you listening? Okay. Nah? She was. I want to actually create this image in our minds. Imagine you are a her, and you have the oil in your hand, and you're pouring out in all these containers, yeah. right? And then you look and you see, oh, there's still there's some more left. Yeah. So you say to your son. Bring me another container. Mm. And he says, there is no more containers left. Mm. Then the oil stops. Oh, wow. Wow. So the oil does not stop because it is done multiplying. Oh, yeah. 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 The oil stops because there aren't any containers left. Oh. 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 Basically, this means if she collected 50, she would have filled 50. Yes. If she collected 500, she would have filled 500. Yeah. Yeah. That's actually what it means, right? The oil stopped simply because there were no more jars yeah. to put it in. Yeah. Ah, Jesus. Oh. Jesus. Basically, if she had collected more empty containers, mm. she would have received more oil. Yeah. That's what it means. Yeah. So some of us are failing to see the multiplication of oil in our lives because we have failed to collect more containers. We have failed to labor. Because being in God, guys, like we, we like to say that homo not dinner, but it's hard work. Eh? Especially as a young person, you know, it's a lot of work. 
Yes. It's a lot of work. Yes. yes. It's not yes. easy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not easy. It is not easy. And so many of us are in need of more, yet we don't have any empty jars left. We are too full with what God has done in the past. We are too full with the previous encounters we've had of God, right? The previous blessings that we've had. You've encountered God in such a miraculous way. You're so full now. To the point where there's actually no more room for God to do anything else. It's like your faith has reached a capacity. So there's no room for you to believe for something new or expect more from the Lord. It's like you're not even willing to do the work that is needed to collect more empty jars. And in fact, this is settling. Right? You've settled. Something that... I just said to myself as I was writing these notes, is that God cannot fill what is full. Yeah. Yeah. That's very true. Yeah. You can't fill what is full, yeah. you know? Yeah. Sure. And I believe that today the Lord is asking us to empty yeah. ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. Empty yourself, sure. right? Sure. And that's why I'm asking us, Father. I know we look so good today. Yeah. Nah? We don't want to cry. Yeah. We don't want to fall. We don't really want to encounter the Holy Spirit because Leah now sometimes he can fortify us. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And just make us look like, you know, we're foolish. But allow yourself. Yeah. Allow that. Allow the Lord to strip you of yeah. that miraculous encounter you had with him in 2016. Yeah. So he can actually give you something new. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Oh, Lord. Oh, thank you, Father. Now there's a second woman. Bo- both in 2 Kings 4. Yeah. As I said, these two women, very different situations, but actually it's quite similar. They're dealing with the same predicament right this woman the second woman in second kings 4 is the shunammite woman her jars are also full but they are full in a different way with this woman the lord has been so good to her and therefore in her mind the lord can do cannot do anything else yeah sure yeah. right the word says one day elisha came there and turned into the upper room and lay down to rest. But he said to Gehazi, his servant, call this Shunammite woman. So he called her and she stood before him. Now he said to Gehazi, say to her now, you have gone to all this trouble for us. What can we do for you? Would you like to be mentioned to the king or to the captain of the army? And she answered, I live among my own people in peace Mm. and security Mm. and need no special favors. Mm. Keshab. Mm. grand. (laughs) Her jaw was so full Mm. that even when presented with an opportunity to receive anything that she could possibly want, Mm. to receive more, she couldn't even comprehend it. Mm. She looked at her surroundings. She said, but I'm prosperous. Mm. Right? That's what the word says. She had everything that she needed. Mm. So when the man of God, Elisha, mm. for some of us, if Elisha has to walk in here, we are first in line. <laughs> Elisha asks her, what can I do for you? And she says, I'm okay. It's okay, man of God. I'm good. God, God has been good to me. I can't really like to hide. Man, God's been good to me. And the problem with this mindset is that it hinders the Holy Spirit. It hinders the Holy Spirit from multiplying. Right? I also want to identify those women who are not necessarily full of how good God has been in the past, but are full of the bad things from the past. Right? We are full of the old, the traumas, the triggers. Yeah. Yeah. 
the failed relationships, the betrayals, the abuse. So when we are presented with an opportunity to actually empty out ourselves, that in itself sounds like labor, guys. It's so much to try and confront your issues that we would rather just keep our jaws full. Something that stood out for me when it comes to the Shunammite woman is that when her son dies, right, and she goes to Elisha, she says to him, did I not tell you not to give me any false hope? Did I say that I want a son? And it's at this moment that I realized that her issue all along, right, was fear of disappointment. Yeah. And a lot of us are there. A lot of us are there. Because we are so full of the old and what the old has done. When the Lord comes and he says, I actually want to do something new. It's actually what Os Amzoleka was talking about. You, you've experienced such trauma in the past when it comes to men. So that when a good man comes, you're like, Angeke. <laughs> so as I close, I actually want to pray for these women.